So the first, the first part of this lesson of you something that we should have learned in chemistry, but ran out of time because we always wanted to run out of time. Um, we're going to talk about oxidation reduction reactions, um, which are also known as redox reactions. Um, so you, if you look, the first two questions on your your sheet of questions have to do with this lesson, and the rest of them have to do with the next PowerPoint. So oxidation. Um, is caused when a molecule loses electrons. Um, and it could also be considered a loss of hydrogen as well. So an atom that is oxidized or, or undergoes oxidation um, is either an atom or a molecule that either loses electrons or loses hydrogen. The opposite of oxidation is reduction. Reduction is when an atom or molecule gains electrons or gains hydrogen. So we, here we have an example from chemistry. Um, we have iron plus copper, two plus ion, um, produces um, iron with a, two, with a positive two charge plus copper. Now, if you remember from chemistry, when something has a positive two charge, that means that it lost electrons, or this has two less electrons. But what's happening here, you see, is iron is becoming plus two, and it's losing electrons. So in this case, iron is being oxidized because it was zero, and now it now it has a plus two charge, and that means it lost two electrons to get a positive two charge. Whereas copper, which had a plus two charge, took the electrons from iron and now has no charge. So in this case, copper here took the electrons or gained electrons, and it was reduced. Now, where the word reduced goes comes from is that this number is known as the oxidation state. And now, and it, it oxidation state went from plus two to zero. So in this case, it was reduced by gaining electrons. Iron was oxidized by losing electrons. So just to summarize again, here's iron. Iron became plus two. That means it lost electrons. So lost electrons, and it's hard to write with this mouse. Um, and when things lose electrons, they are oxidized. Let's write ox. And then copper went from plus two, and it gained two electrons. And by electrons are negatively charged, it gained electrons. And when you gain electrons, that's being reduced. As we try to write with this mouse. So let's look at the example on the bottom. Here we have Mn plus 2. And Mn plus 2 becomes Mn. Okay. What happened here? In order to lose its plus 2, it had to gain two electrons. That means Mn was reduced. Pb, however, it went to Pb plus 2. That means it lost two electrons. Lost two electrons. And that means it is oxidized. So those were two chemistry examples. Um, we're going to look at more examples that have more biological rel relevance now. Um, if you remember, I said that losing electrons it can be oxidizing, but so is losing hydrogen. And then gaining electrons is being reduced, but so is gaining hydrogen. So this is actually a combustion reaction. Um, we're taking methane, and then we're adding oxygen to it. And we're producing carbon dioxide and water. These release a lot of heat. Um, in this reaction, essentially, methane is becoming carbon dioxide, and oxygen is becoming water. So in this case, look, let's look what happened to methane. Methane had four hydrogens, and now it has none. It lost those hydrogens. So in this case, the methane was oxidized. We'll just write ox for that. And then now here is oxygen. Oxygen became water. Um, and it gained two hydrogens. So in this case, the water was reduced. Um, so the vocabulary words below used to be really important, but they're not as important below. The reducing agent is the reactant that is oxidized. It's the agent that helps do the reducing. So in this case, CH4 was oxidized because it lost its hydrogens, but it is the reducing agent. And oxygen was reduced because it gained hydrogen and became water, and it is the oxidizing agent. Um, that's not as important as it used to be in the curriculum, but 
just to so and you, if you ever take chem, you hear those words. The reducing agent is the thing that does the oxidizing, um, or it's the, the reactant that has been oxidized in the reaction. So here's a, another example. I'm going to give you a second to think about um, what's being oxidized and what's being reduced and why. So I'm going to pet Kaiser, who's sitting here. Hello, Kaiser. How are you? Um, I'll be quiet now. Or you could just pause the video. Okay. So, this is C6H12 H plus 9 oxygen plus 6H2O plus 6 carbon dioxide. Once again, it's a combustion reaction. Um, in this reaction, this guy is being turned into carbon dioxide. And he lost all his hydrogens. He had 12, he now has 0. So in this case, this guy, he was oxidized. And oxygen was turned into water, and it gained hydrogen. So in this case, the oxygen was reduced. Um, there's a silly sentence to help you remember the difference between oxidation and reduction. Um, the sentence is, Leo goes ger. I could write with the mouse, which is not being too successful. So, Leo, loss of electrons equals oxidation, gain of electrons equals reduction. I'll say that again. Loss of electrons is, oxyg is, is ox um, <laughs> oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. Now, electrons and hydrogens, for our purposes, sort of mean the same thing, um, but that might help you rem remember the difference between oxidation and reduction. So, if we take a look at these different carbon molecules, um, the question is asking which carbon molecule is the most oxidized. Um, the carbon molecule is the most oxidized when it contains the least amount of hydrogen. So this is the least oxidized carbon. Um, it has four hydrogens. And this is the most oxidized uh, carbon, which is carbon dioxide. So now to the entire point of the next week and a half, I would say. Um, probably going to have our last quiz of the quarter on Friday, which is the last day of the quarter. Not this Friday, next Friday, um, which is the last day of the quarter. Um, and the new quarter starts. I feel like this quarter never ended. Um, so this is respiration. Um, and it's going to be the, or the chemical reaction that, for respiration that we're going to be spending about the next five days um, talking about. In respiration, you take um, glucose, a monosaccharide, um, and oxygen, and you produce carbon dioxide and, uh, and water. So here's carbon dioxide. Um, here's water. And this is actually a combustion reaction. Um, it releases a lot of energy, but when this occurs in the body, it releases... So combustion reactions usually are explosive, they release flames, big explosions. Um, but for those of you, uh, Nicole will remember this, we, we did a combustion reaction in your class when I burnt my finger. Um, but the combustion reaction that occurs in, a, in, the, in the cell, through cellular respiration, um, occurs much slower. And it releases the energy in slower steps. Um, and stores it in ATP. And as we've been discussing, ATP is the energy source in the cell. Um, in the next PowerPoint, you're going to see why it's the energy molecule of the cell and why it's a good energy molecule in the cell. Um, but in this reaction, we're basically taking glucose and turning it into, or oxidizing it, um, into carbon dioxide. And then we're taking water um, and reducing, I'm sorry, we're taking oxygen um, and reducing it to water. So in this reaction, um, glucose is oxidized, and oxygen is reduced to water. You see the sentence underneath, if you wanted to be um, sound smart, I guess, you could say that respiration is the complete oxidation of glucose to carbon dioxide um, by, oxy by oxygen. So oxygen here is the oxidizing agent. It is helping to oxidize glucose. Um, I always ask 10th graders, and I, you guys might have remembered, um, why we need to breathe in oxygen. And like the answer that I get from most students is to live. Um, but to be honest, the real reason, and we're going to get into more detail about why oxygen is needed in this process, is you need oxygen so that you can make energy to live. Um, not to breathe, um, not to live, but the purpose of oxygen is to extract energy from glucose by helping to oxidize the glucose. Um, and we'll see sort of where in the process um, oxygen plays this role. So 
um, I'm going to stop now and start the second PowerPoint. You should now, at this point, um, be able to answer questions one, two, and three um, on the questions or the questions to answer from the video lecture. So if you need to go back um, or look at your notes, so you, at this point you should have filled in the notes and, and now begin answering questions one, two, and three. And I'll probably see you again in two minutes.